So there we go. Let's see. Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, that is by far one of the smoothest starts of this show ever. That's, <laughs> that's phenomenal. <laughs> that's always great. Um, and we are still one minute before the uh, the top of the hour, so that's great. We already see people joining. Uh, so let's use this moment just to um, what to, to explain a bit for the people who are joining for the very first time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a very open and, and informal uh, in, uh, interview with Matthias Kettner, who's already joined here on stage. Well, first of all, welcome, Matthias. Absolutely wonderful to have you. And after yeah, thanks, that, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, no oh. worries. <laughs> I'm so happy that you uh, that you made some some time in your busy schedule to to join here. And then following that, we're gonna open it up for Q and A here on the um, yeah of course. Uh, so, yeah, sure. so people are able to just uh, raise their hands uh, here in uh, in Discord, and they can join us on stage and ask their questions live. If people are um, unable, unwilling, or uh, <laughs> uh, if they've had some questions in the meantime, they can everyone can is free to use the companion channel on uh, discord as well where we can then well, we'll keep an eye on that the other thing that we're going to be using the um well the companion channel for is of course to share things like links or the things that we're going to be talking about so the first thing just to make sure that everyone sees where the companion channel is i've just pasted oh, okay, the link to come the um to your website so people are immediately aware aware of uh, where where everything is there you go so and with that we are past the top of the hour so uh first of all uh, welcome everyone for this again uh, one of the great interviews that we've got lined up for uh for this well winter slash spring edition of the modular clubhouse i'm not sure what uh, the weather is like for you today uh, matthias but here we had a beautiful bright and sunny day in the netherlands how is it for you yeah we had the same we had the same it's, it's very dry for a long time and it was very yeah. sunny and nice nice temperature mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm in munich just just uh, um, in case somebody doesn't know <laughs> yeah so you're a bit further south uh, than uh, than where i am of course but still yeah the, the weather has been pu has been beautiful uh for quite some time already uh in this general area of course we actually almost touched like 20 degrees a few days before and i guess you guys have had it even warmer already right yes yes and the sun it was was almost hot so <sighs> it was, yeah it was very nice it's a bit dry here but <laughs> otherwise very nice absolutely and i just hope that this bodes uh well for uh what I like to believe is going to be a great festival season, and I think that we're all ready to go out and see live music again. Which, which is of course a nice segue into um, into you, Matthias. For for the people that don't yeah. know you, um, would you would you actually well first introduce yourself as a musician and then as a maker or vice versa? Um, yeah maybe let's start with the music because music it's is mm -hmm. the thing that's all about for me so i i played i played basically jazz all my life i was a yeah. jazz musician played the saxophone for maybe 30 30 more than 30 years great and uh, not as a professional but i i would call semi-professional I, I played when i was student i played jazz together with students of jazz and with professional musicians sometimes so I have quite a background in, in jazz music. Great. Different bands and, and stuff like that. And a couple of years ago, I I detected Modular for me. So it's not so long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but Modular is very interesting because it's so creative. Absolutely. And you are not limited basically to one instrument. So when you play jazz, you make improvisation together. It's, it's really fun to play with people. But you are limited because you, you cannot decide what's going on right now. You know, you, you can mm -hmm. do a melody improvisation, but modular gives you the freedom to make musical decisions right in the moment. And, and that's that's what I do most most times is live music. So live Absolutely, improvisation yeah. is, is most fun for me. Absolutely. And and you um, mentioned, well, that, that that's already coming up as 
you playing in jazz, but has jazz always been a uh, a part of your life uh, when you were growing up as as a a, a young Matthias Kettner? Um, what was music yeah, like for you back then? I, 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 th I think I started playing jazz when I was 14 because my I played the clarinet at that time, but my yeah. my teacher was a jazz musician and played the saxophone. Oh, of course, yeah. And so I, I wanted all, I wanted to play the saxophone as well and switched over playing jazz. And <clears throat> for me, the improvisation and freedom is the interesting thing about jazz because, yeah, you, you can go your own ways. You're not limited to, to play any any notes. You, you get the freedom. Yeah, you can go any way you want. You could. You, there, there is typically. Well, that, that's of course the joke within jazz, right? You, you, there is no notes that is wrong. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Almost, well. <laughs> not even some not, not even notes that are bad or good. Uh, it depends on on the moment and what you like and, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so that has influenced me uh, a lot. And when I started to play modular or experiment with modular, I wanted to force jazz into modular. <laughs> ah, it was, uh, yeah. it was a very hard task, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how, how did you actually start with, with modular? Because you said, of course, you've been playing uh, the saxophone and clarinet before. And then a couple of years back, you made that well, you made that step into modular. But that's not something that you just wake up in the morning and say, well, hey, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. Uh, if I'm honest, I started with modular uh, when I was, I think it was 15 or 16. Uh, I had oh, a, wow. a half-built four-month synthesizer. Uh, I'm not sure if you know four-month. It was... It was a modular synthesizer with, with 3.5 mils jacks, uh, similar to Eurorack, basically, in, uh, as a part of a, a week, uh, uh, um, how do you call it, a, ma a magazine. Oh, and the great, funny yeah. thing is that four months synthesizer was the, also the one that Dieter Döpfer started with. And uh, at, though, at that time, and he started building modules for the four months synthesizer. Ah. But at that time, time there was no internet and nothing and i just had this half built synthesizer which I, I had one vco and one filter and i had no internet and played around a bit with it but but i didn't uh, follow up on that uh -huh. and a couple of years ago i was interested what's going on uh with with synthesizers and stuff and found out uh, about the the whole eurorack movement yeah and that it was started by Dieter Döpfer, basically, and mm -hmm. yeah, and so I wanted to try it out. <laughs> awesome! Yeah. So I bought a, a, a Dieter Döpfer basic system. Yeah. And then I didn't know what to do with it. I almost <laughs> sent it back. <laughs> oh no! But then I got an an, an Arabic verb, and then then it was started. The, the fun was starting for me, playing around with it and making strange sounds. Yeah. So you've got the basic system, the the Döpfer. Uh, basic system you added the the make noise herb verb to that and that's when things yeah. really really when the stars aligned you might have said yes yes because with the basic system i mean you have two vcos and then then you have the midi interface yeah then i played some simple melodies using my, my computer as a sequencer but it wasn't not, not not really fun you know absolutely i think it's at the beginning with modular i don't know what what, what you want to do the, mm -hmm. the question is, if, if someone goes into modular, they ask, uh, what modules should I buy? Then the, the answer is, it depends on what you want to do. <laughs> Absolutely. And then yeah. the answer is, I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the difficult thing. I, and, and also, uh, it changes from time to time what you are doing with your modular. So you need to find your style. You're going to buy a bunch of modules and sell them later on because you, you need some time for finding your way, I think absolutely and and then it becomes a um an interaction between yourself and your modular system where of course as you said at the start it's all about okay well what do you want to achieve and you try then well you do your best at the very least to determine what kind of modules you need but then of course the the modules you end up buying will start forming you as a as a as a modular yes. musician as well and that interaction and that's uh well you might almost say well that is a very dynamic because it's not something that is defined beforehand but it is indeed something that is almost uh symbiotic you might even say yes yes it's a very inspirational i i believe that if you have a, a very very precise um notion what you want to do mm -hmm. then modulus is, is, is wrong for you because it's very hard to do that 
then, yeah. then a computer is better if you have a very precise idea of your music then a computer can help you uh, creating exactly that music but modular yeah. helps you getting inspiration in the first place and coming up with something completely different maybe i like that approach i like that 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 that, that way of thinking about it because indeed if you have have that very clear idea then yeah you can spend well <laughs> thousands and upon thousands of uh, euros on 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 modules uh, or you could say well i've got this exact plan in my head i could just go in uh, in your daw buy some plugins and get to that point first off much faster and of course much cheaper as well yeah but but the outcome is, is sometimes not so good because uh, mm -hmm. you image in your imagination yeah you, you think of a very nice music but when you are finished it's maybe boring uh, that because one is absolutely no, no true yeah. From, yeah and you so don't have I, those I nice little knobs to turn around with <laughs> to, to play with of course yeah <laughs> and, and, and and these little surprises so in in my experience the the best musical situations where when i first had an idea what to do yeah with the modular started something and something different happened so and 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 i was free to accept that and, and work on that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I those think, happy little I accidents think, again yeah yeah i think you achieve the best results if you have a combination you you have some idea what you want to do and do it but be free for accepting what's happening mm -hmm. Perfect. so if you have absolutely no idea what to do and just patch around it, it might be the case that you create some nice sounds but i think it's it's difficult to, to get somewhere absolutely. so i think it's good if you have some idea where you want to go make a patch uh, create some music but mm -hmm. then be free uh, to let something happen if something different happens absolutely absolutely and then so in, in in your personal case so you had your uh your your basic system you you found the herb verb and things finally clicked how did that journey then continue on what were the next couple of steps that you took and when did it all go completely overboard i'm, I'm interested to know that part of your journey as well I think it was it was quite typical so um i ended up buying more and more modules of course mm -hmm. <laughs> as we all and do as a, I, as a student you have you have a limitation in money i already earned my own money and so on so it, it, it was not so limited in the number of modules i could uh, purchase mm -hmm. and as always happens you buy too many more modules in too short time yeah and you lose a bit the 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 uh, where you want to go you know yeah and then some at, at some point I, I saw that what i basically want is to create an instrument most people uh, uh with modular create new patches uh, every now and then and i think that's it's part of the fun of modular but i went away that's a bit un, un atypical i think mm-hmm because I have um, a very large complex patch that I hardly change. It, it's just very slowly evolving. And, okay. And I call that my instrument uh, or my machine. You know, it's, it's yeah, 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 instrument. yeah. It's, it comprises, I think, about 400 or 500 patch cables, which I have made myself. <laughs> um, I think we've, we've, of... seen, we've seen those pictures. I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to yeah. find one of those pictures and just paste them into the um, into the channel let's see if I can I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your uh, your uh, Instagram page currently to see if I'm oh, if, uh, because I, I immediately have this this idea of the picture that really resonated well with me I think that, yeah there's something like this or oh, this is a yeah, it's actually uh, a video right? I'm looking for, for... yeah these are all videos oh this I think this is uh... No, that's that's Let's not see the if one. I find something anyways. Because that is on the one hand, it's very impressive, and as you say, the the patch that you are running there, the the instrument that you've created for yourself, is indeed something you don't just typically go out and patch that overnight. That is indeed something that has yeah. evolved in <laughs> years on years on years on years. You might even say. I I'll post the picture myself. Uh, oh, give great! Me a second. Yeah. Um where was it uh, 
I had it just here. Ah, okay. Second. Yeah, no, take your time. On the wives 20. Where have I been? I'm in waves 20. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the beauty the beauty of discord right yeah okay <laughs> okay that's i guess let's try that one mm -hmm. ah a bit small is it okay can, can, um i can't are you pasting it to the companion channel or where are you pasting yeah it? yeah yeah i think it's a bit oh, okay but it ah. might be that i'm not getting it in straight away then that could be I can see it's too small. I'm not so trained with this uh, this no course. That's the beauty, right? Again, just like modular, you can you learn or, or along the way. <laughs> Where is it? Ah, same again. No worries. What I'll what I'll do is I'll uh, well maybe even or okay. already just the main picture you've got on your website. Uh, the um, uh, that that picture is already a great indication of what you yeah, what you've done because you it's just a small fraction of your overall machine, but it's still it, it it shows the 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 attention to detail, but also the the ginormous amount of of patches there as well. Oh, yeah, this is also an, a very good one. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's it's. Um... It's an instrument with with a couple of voices. You know, I have melody voices, yeah. I have chord voices, I have drum voices, and and I'm basically trying to play a complete band. And mm -hmm. uh, the most fun for me is impro improvising. So I apply live kick, for example. Maybe it's an hour or an hour and a half, or just maybe just in half an hour. Yeah. And I start somewhere. I prepare the the, the start groove. Mm-hmm just just in order to make to don't fail at the very beginning <laughs> <laughs> oh this is a good, good then, great idea of course to do that yeah somewhere yeah so the first couple of minutes are are uh, uh, planned and the rest is a kind of interesting journey and sometimes it's i come to very interesting musical places absolutely yeah and that's as you say that that, the, that can only be achieved with uh the flexibility that modular brings of course yeah, and of course, of course, it's like an, uh, every other instrument you need you need training. So if you if you make a new patch every every day or every week, mm -hmm. you can be very creative, but you will never learn by heart what note does what, mm -hmm. like a musician. Yeah, the so muscle you memory you mean, always... like where you can actually do it yeah. blindfolded as well. Yes, and that's the point where you you start actually making music. And mm. so for me, the advantage of having an an extra instrument is that. I'm very trained. Something hasn't changed for two or three years, and so I can really play it. Yeah. And that's the, that's the trade-off. Of course, I'm limited. Uh, I, I won't change it every day. So I'm limited to a bit to the modules I currently use. Sometimes I change it a bit, but that's for me. For me, it's it's really fun because I can I can go somewhere and make music. Anytime, Absolutely. Anytime I like. Well, still, you'll have to and... bring your ginormous device with you, of course, but... <laughs> I, it's it's indeed something yeah, that I, you I can easily three, easily do yeah i think it's okay it's three cases uh these top cases are very sturdy um mm -hmm. they have the lids and everything so so it's that's quite okay absolutely um and and then of course uh somewhere along the line you 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 made the transition or you you also decide to say well okay well i i have this this great idea for the droid system uh, could you tell us a bit more about how, how that came to be how you came up with that idea or where you saw the necessity or maybe where you saw the gap within your system where you said this is what i'm going to be needing uh to get to that next stage i mean uh, as i told you i wanted yeah i didn't know that modular is not meant to play jazz <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true yeah so, <laughs> so i simply tried it i wanted to force it because it's the only uh, it's my way of thinking music is in chord progressions and polyphonic music and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And that's very hard to achieve with, with or at least was hard to achieve with the modules that I found these couple of years ago. So the first idea was 
to create this Symphonion. Uh, it's it's not produced in my label. You you might know it. It's from ACL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's this eight channel quantizer and chord generator, and it can make chord progressions and stuff like that. So that was the first the first step that I needed in order to make polyphonic music. I need one module that controls all of the pitches in your system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you cannot you cannot take two or three quantizers and maybe a sequencer uh, or two and let them all do go through a chord progression. So okay, if yeah. you um, because the quantizers are, sometimes they have CV control, but but it's really really a pain in the ass to make read chord progressions with all your stuff in the in modular. Mm -hmm. So most people simply play in one key. They're playing C minor, for example. All yeah, the time. yeah. I mean, it's interesting. You can make it. It's a whole style. It's not bad, but I, I wanted just a, a bit more, you know. Where you actually had and that the, the the capability to, um, if I if I understand your uh, description there correctly, is where you had the option to actually say, well, I want to have hands-on control, so I could easily switch my quantizers from from one scale to to the other in order to have these more complex jazz influenced uh, chord progressions right yeah and it needn't it needn't be, be i mean uh, chord progressions are in most most kinds of music uh, also pop music or yeah, yeah, yeah. Michel jar for example does lots of chord progressions or Kraftwerk or electronic music is is not limited uh, to one key it's just a modular it's it's not so easy because you want randomness you know if you if you program all your music in a in a sequencer with eight tracks yeah it's no problem to make chord progressions but then it's no improvisation it's just you press a button and the music runs and that's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i wanted to bring in randomness you know random generators uh or simple performance sequences that just make a melody sketch and i want to ship that from c minor to a major at any time or stuff like yeah, that yeah yeah and for that you need or i think the best idea is to have a good quantizer mm-hmm that that knows about scales and, and progressions mm -hmm. so in uh, my in my big uh, system uh, every voice is controlled by one of my two symphonions so in, at any time i can switch around the scale so i can even do i can improvise chord progressions on the fly mm -hmm. okay yeah and that's that's really fun and also uh, sometimes i play together with other musicians and we they also have a symphonion and you can connect the symphonions with a with a patch cable and then they share the chord progressions oh i didn't know that that's so nice one, one is the leading symphonion uh, uh, and if the leading symphonion changes the chords then the 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 remote that one the connected ones uh, the attached ones uh, change to the same chord so so you can improvise chord progressions even if you're performing as as two musicians for example that's that's really that gives you much freedom yeah oh that's uh, that's awesome yeah i haven't like really looked into uh the uh symphonium uh that much yet uh but those are indeed as you described that uh primarily really usable if you want to achieve the things that you want to achieve and and how did then once you you got this setup done with uh with those two symphonians um how did you then start to figure out okay well this is how the droids ecosystem you might already call it currently how does that then tie into that then as well it it, uh, it took a couple of, of years actually my the first idea was that I, I wanted to create a new module after the symphonion which was a melody yeah. generator a kind of uh it's based on the same idea as the marbles from mutant uh instruments uh, yeah yeah instruments so you have uh, it's a, or on the Turing machine. So you have you have randomness, but you have repeating melodies that evolve uh, with time. And mm -hmm. I wanted to to be it multi-track, and then I had so many ideas of parameters that you could control the melody with, for example, yeah. the the size of the steps, the amount of randomness, and and should it play off beats or down beats or and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't decide about the faceplate how many knobs should i have how many jacks should i have so that, that <laughs> brought up the idea that i have a kind of of free assignment so the user could assign what what of of functions he wants to assign to which pot mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. which cv jack and from that i thought oh we could generalize that that a bit 
and then you really want to to position that as a very separate uh, contained ecosystem where you can indeed um, where you might say your modular setup is your own instrument that you've designed but then within your instrument you can design your very personal droid controller you might even say or your droid subsystem uh, that fits your instruments requirements even yeah i mean uh, basically you with the droid you you usually do two different things mm -hmm. the first thing is you can use it as a swiss army knife yeah yeah for doing little little cv tasks for example you need a clock divider uh, that mm -hmm. divides by three or maybe mm -hmm. you want to switch it between three and four so that you can achieve this with two external modules maybe yeah but if you have a droid you just need one of your jacks and you have seven more left for other tasks so you can make small things there or you need a cv controls limiter or a precision adder or an octave switch for a, a vco that doesn't have an octave switch mm -hmm. so you you stuff a, a couple of these functions into one droid Mm -hmm. And I yeah. do this a lot with my big system. So I've, I've, as time as time went by, I removed all of my CV modules, and and, and replaced them all droid. with droids. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. It's it's much more compact. It 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 freed so much space, and at the same time, it gave me so much more flexibility. And and with these external controllers, I have I can map the musically interesting things to the buttons I like. So if, for example, for my music, uh, uh, the clock division three, four and five is important and not yeah. else, then I map these three to three buttons or to one button and toggle through them. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I can create an interface where I just have the musically interesting decisions in a very compact interface. Yeah. And that's, that's fun. So the, the second way to use the droid is to make, a, to use it as an own music machine, basically, for yeah, control, indeed, to control yeah. everything. So because the, the next idea was in the droid uh, that uh, these uh, it's a it's a kind of small modular within a module so yeah. <laughs> i yeah yeah i call these things uh, circuits in order not to mix it up with actual modules mm -hmm. but they, they actually behave like modules the things in the droid so the the idea was of course that you could connect them uh, uh, interconnect them within the droid so, for example, you can, could have three LFOs modulating each other. Yeah. And just just the last one uh, output at an actual physical output of the droid. And that's, of course, then again, sequences. that 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 much more efficient and economical from a uh, from an HP perspective, even because you can then say this is the exact piece of functionality I need, and it's only going to cost me one jack on this already well existing module that i have in my rack yes. already yeah yeah it was always hp sensitive because i i, I always play live gigs so of course size yeah. always matters so to mm -hmm. say and then of so course the, the limitations that you drawing. impose yourself will then of course drive your creativity even further because if you've got all the room and all the modules in the world uh you won't be confined to your uh to your system and for, for, I've heard from so many people already with, that said, I truly start to become creative when I impose those limitations upon myself. Like, it, like, like you say, well, I want to have something that I can travel with. So I need to be very cognizant of the number of HP I, I dedicate to certain things. And that drives creativity yeah, yeah, then, that's right. of course. Perfect, love that. Limitations make creative, but when you have run out of HP, but not run out of ideas, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's nice to save some HP uh, to add more voices. You know, I'm a guy, I, I, I like to play polyphonic music. So mm -hmm. I like to have many, many different voices in my system. They didn't play all uh, at the same time, but it's like an orchestra. You know? I can say, now I bring in this voice just for a change yeah so the droid helped me freeing space lots of space so i could add more of these really cool synth voices vcos and fm synthesis and, and everything so yeah and and then also maybe that's that's maybe a, another question uh in regards to droid um so so why did you decide to do droid maybe a bit more standalone instead of again uh, working together with acl on that 
I I was a bit um, disappointed about how long everything took with ACL. That they need a very long time to create the Symphonion mm -hmm. and everything. And then we had discussions. I uh, uh, already wanted to start the Droid with ACL, but then we had discussions how we make it and so on. And mm -hmm. I don't like these discussions, you know. You want to be a bit more, I, I just, uh, a bit more agile in that respect, you might say. Yeah, I want to be more agile, and and at the end, it worked out very well. So I absolutely that, that, that's I that's one do... of the things that we can all that we can immediately agree on. It's been a great success, of course. The the overall response to the to the droid ecosystem. Also, technically, it, it worked. I'm really really happy how how well it works. Mm -hmm. And um, then. Uh, did you what was the most challenging thing for you to uh, to start building or designing the droids uh, yourself because um, one thing we haven't talked about is of course what what kind of technical background uh, you had before actually diving into that but maybe also maybe that already started with the Symphonia and I, I'm, I'm not sure but how was that technical development journey for you I mean as a job I'm a software developer mm -hmm. you know I've developed software yeah. all my life so so that that was the easy part. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's the, the droid and also the, the Symphony have complex softwares, but that that didn't scare me off. You know, that's no, that something. that that was the that was the easy part. You might even say. Yeah, and and the hardware. I, I at the beginning I, I tried to make my own PCBs, but I stopped that very soon. <laughs> okay. And now I have a cooperation with Vladimir Pantelic from WP, uh, VPME. .de. Yeah. He's very famous for his Euclidean circles and the absolutely, and yeah, stuff like that. And so we work together, and he designs all the PCBs and uh, makes sure they are manufactured uh, correctly. And yeah, that's his part, and I make the software and the production and everything else. So, so that then becomes a very um, synergistic approach between you. Uh, from a, from, a, from on the one hand a musical perspective uh the requirements that you have let's say honed over the years uh of, of performing with, with with your modular uh setup uh combine that with the well the software development background that you have together with the um with the technical engineering craftsmanship that vladimir then brings to the table would that be a, a good yeah, yeah, that's summary a of that? combination perfect. yeah it's also very, very funny. Uh, we have a completely different approach of how to create modules. Uh, Vladimir is very, very successful uh, with his modules, mm -hmm. but he always starts with the technic, uh, technical. With the, for example, these Euclidean circles, he started actually with the LEDs. He got these these multicolor LEDs and thought himself, "What can I do with that? Uh, I can oh, wow. make a circle. Okay, what can I do with the circle and so on?" And that that's the way he created his ideas. And was so that's very successful. organic, you might even say. It's yeah. He, he's a te he, more. He has a more technical background, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm more from the completely different side. I'm a musician, and I have a musical problem. And then I, I think, how can I solve that problem? Absolutely. And then, of course, and then yeah. I see what what parts, components, or or what hardware I need in order to solve that. That's more my approach. So it's completely. Why is he a completely uh, yeah orthogonal to his approach, but both can can work out and and this this partnership is very 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 good for me because he's he's I think he's one of the best hardware designers for Eurek for digital Eurek modules. Awesome, perfect, he's perfect. Very very accomplished with all these uh, microprocessors and stuff like that. So and it's always a nice guy and it's also fun working with him. I can only imagine. Yeah, I've had some some interactions uh, over over email with with Vladimir, and he just uh, always struck me as a very um, creative and colorful guy, and maybe then even colorful with a story you just told about the LEDs yeah. has a different layer to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. I love that. And then um, maybe just just another quick question. So how often do you still touch your uh, your saxophone then? Oh, I haven't touched it for a couple of years. Oh, the problem is the, the saxophone is, is uh, if you don't play it regularly a couple of times a week, yeah. then you 
you need all these muscles in your in your lips and so on in order to play it. Ah, it's a bit course, it's yeah. a bit like the trumpet. So if you, I mean, if you also play a bit uh, the electric bass, if you don't play the bass for for three years and take it again, you immediately can play. But with the saxophone, mm -hmm. you can play it for two minutes and then your lips go weak and and you're just hurting. It's not, <laughs> It's not really fun. No, you, it's not hurting, but but you cannot control the weed anymore. Ah, okay. Didn't you know that. Tighten. Yeah, you, you need uh, you need a lot of power in order to make the mouthpiece tight, mm -hmm. so the air doesn't come out but goes through the reed and and, and so on. So it's it's frustrating. It, either you make it whole or you leave it. Everything in between is frustrating. I can imagine. I can imagine. No, that's maybe good. I come back to it someday. But <laughs> well, or, or maybe just create a uh, a module that is able to control the uh, saxophone. Hmm. Might be might be interesting. I mean, basically, <laughs> I've built my electric saxophone with uh, with this ribbon controller. In my module, I have, I have a ribbon controller, and that's quantized in time and and pitch. Yeah. And so I have one degree of freedom with my finger for for kind of improvising, playing a bit with a, with like like a saxophone, maybe. Oh yeah, of course. And then you still have that same same level of control and the same level of uh, flexibility, uh, but also the the unquantized nature is then also something that you can then work with. Yeah, yeah, I can I can switch it over to unquantized, and then yeah. uh, but when they, then it's hard hard to get the right pitch. It's like a, a like a a violin or something. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course. Perfect. I mean, it's completely different than the saxophone in the in the way it's played, but it accomplishes a similar task, creating a melody right now. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right course, in, the, yeah. in the second, improvising a melody. That's something That's, you can do. Uh, no, absolutely. And then, of course, uh, do you already see yourself uh, out and playing live again? Uh, during the summertime, or do you expect that things will take a bit longer before you can uh, start touring again? Or what's your outlook on? Because of course, yeah, we we don't really talk I'm about sure COVID sure. anymore, but yeah, yeah. Currently, I'm very busy with with uh, with the Droid. Uh, also, the the most interesting controller, these motor fader modules, uh, will hopefully start soon to be mm -hmm. in, in production. The first batch. That's something I'm very excited about. Also, I'm currently working on a, on studio recordings. On a, maybe we create a, a vinyl, an, an uh, EP together. Oh, with, nice! With a professional musician, mm -hmm. who's, who's popular in, in Germany. So we have already made recordings that are very, very, very good, very interesting, very inspiring. Just need to make mix downs and arrangements and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, great! And then you mentioned I, it, the it, the motor it, controller. Could, could you? Tell us a bit more about that as well. Um, the idea of the motor faders I had uh, a couple of years ago. It's uh, it's basically a, a fader with 60 millimeters uh, um, way, and it's motor controlled, so it can move somewhere from itself. Yeah, yeah indeed. Um, those are popular in, in, in professional mixing desks and mm -hmm. are used, for, for example, for storing presets of mixes there. Yeah, um, but I had the idea of using them ju just as an intelligent input device. So with the motor fader, you can solve different problems in, in the modular because space is always uh, space always matters. Yeah. So indeed. for example, if you have you, you all know these sequences where one bank of faders is used for two tracks, for example. Mm -hmm. So when you switch between track one and two, the faders don't move, of course, so you can't see the melody you're actually uh, playing with the faders. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have something it's that's actually gonna example. gonna position the faders to that first uh, set of uh, of parameters first, and that's 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 where the the motorized part comes uh, comes from, right? Yeah. So that's uh, I mean that's a common common uh, way in Eurek that you overlay one fader or one pot with different values. Yeah. But you always have a problem of picking the up. You don't see where you are, and so on. So that's that's always a bad solution. So sometimes you use encoders, but with the encoders you don't have really the start and the end feeling, and you don't. You need always your eyes. Where are? Where am I? And I want I want direct uh, hands-on feelings. And with the with the motor mm -hmm. faders, 
it's perfectly possible to switch over to a different uh, track or something and the faders immediately show you uh, the current values and Indeed, also yeah. are correctly positioned uh, uh, when it comes to the beginning and the end so one way is to, to overlay one fader with different meanings at the same time or maybe you have an, you have a, a bank of four lfos and for everyone for every lfo you want uh, envelopes you have four envelopes maybe and yeah you have adsr for everyone. Of so course, it's 16 yeah. parameters so you can map four faders to these and either you would switch between adsr for example you press a mm -hmm. on a button and then you have the attacks of all the four envelopes yeah or you could say I press one for the envelope one, and then the faders have the meaning A, D, S, and R. Indeed. So then you just have the uh, the immediate, also the the tactile feedback. Okay, well this is where we were when I set this the first time, and I think that um, you did. If I remember correctly, you showed uh, a working prototype at Superbooth, right? Yes. Yes. And also the funny thing is what, what I didn't recognize before that uh, these faders are very big, which is in modular, usually you have small faders just because of space issues. No, nobody wants to, to waste space with big faders. So the yeah. faders are small, but if you have big faders, you actually can at the same time play eight faders with eight fingers. It's absolutely no problem. Of course, yeah. Um, when you have two so banks of two uh, motor faders set side by side where you actually have them as yeah well, and yeah, then you can truly start playing them like an instrument again yeah that was the the, the setup at the super booth i had a sequencer so with eight fingers you can at the same time change eight steps of the melody or you switch over and, and just control the releases of the notes or a slew or or the attack time or, or what, whatever you like awesome. and the second way to use the faders of course is to work with presets Mm -hmm. So you yeah. switch over between different presets of something and the fader moves uh, to the new value itself. So yeah. that's, that's something completely different, but also very, very uh, useful. Awesome. But the killer feature, which, which people liked most on Superbooth, was the haptic feedback. So what I do is I use the, the motors in the faders mm -hmm. to make you feel kind of artificial dense. For example, if you use the fader for selecting a note of a sequence, yeah. and you say, okay, I have two octaves, there are maybe seven notes per octave, uh, so we have maybe 14 uh, or 15 notes, mm -hmm. which I can select. And I can create artificial notches, so you feel the Absolutely, 15 notes. Yeah. It's like um, you, you get that works. force feedback into the, the actual fader itself like yes. you can immediately but as this is of course then fully well software uh software designed that can then it's not it's not a physical thing it's always a software thing because it's just a motor that's going to give you that, that 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 tactile feedback immediately yeah but it works amazingly well that's really funny so on the and the nice thing it's not it's not just a gadget or a, a nice gimmick it's really helpful because at that point of time you can uh, change the node without viewing any display or fader or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just feel it with your finger. For example, I say I want to go two nodes up. You just feel it. You don't. And you need just to go look tack tack, and you just feel that those two steps uh, when you slide. Yeah, and now slider, we come, yeah. yeah, and that's that's more like a real instrument. You know, with the saxophone, you, you needn't look at your keys. No, because you've got you your you've got them. your you've got your knobs. You've got your probably. I'm not even sure what the technical term is on the saxophone, but I would I would call them keys already. But yeah, yeah. Or or in a guitar, a guitar player never looks at his uh, uh, key, uh, at, uh, at his guitar when he's playing. Yeah, because he he feels or, he uh, feels his fretboard. Yeah, the fretboard. Yeah, he just feels it and has has his eyes for something else for interacting with the. Uh, the audience for reading notes for for anything he likes you know yeah indeed and that's something the motor faders can bring you and that's that's really something new and yeah. something very so, interesting so, so then then the question becomes uh, matthias so how far along are you with with, with the motor faders um and and uh, do you have any plans on uh, when you might be able to release those or is that still something that's being worked on uh, the current plan is that at the end of this month, uh, so in a week or two, I get uh, the final PCBs. 
mm -hmm. for creating the first batch of 50 units. Oh, wow. So the first 25 so people uh, are going to be very happy with them because they're probably going to buy two of them yeah, at the same time. <laughs> I, probably we make a public beta phase. We, we made that with a, with a recent MIDI expander for, for Droid with this X7 expander. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which gives you MIDI in and out with USB and, uh, and TRS. Mm -hmm. And we made a beta phase with our community and that worked out pretty well. So we at the first batch, we just cre uh, created 10 of these. Mm -hmm. And we got lots of feedback from from bugs or missing features or stuff like that. Yeah, we fixed that. We created another ten and another ten. And after we we sold thirty of these to the beta testers, many thanks to the, some of the, them are here and oh, I great. can see in our audience. Ooh, so nice. thanks to them and uh, and so we found all all the important bugs, and then it was it was ready for release. Great. And with the motor phases, we probably do the same. So we create. Um, we make a better phase. The, the the difference to the X7 module is that we have real hardware here. So we have mechanical parts. So yeah. we need to make sure that everything is working fine. Uh, and the motor faders are not being destroyed in a couple of weeks, but <laughs> yeah, but are used yeah. in a way that that, that they. But were you, were you long. able to um, um, to reuse some of the um, the building blocks from these? Uh, these professional mixes, or had you did, did you really have to redesign the whole module from scratch in that regard? I just took the motor faders. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a fader combined with a small motor, and it's not a step motor. It's just it, it just has two pins, and when you apply a voltage, then it, it turns around. So, so that is also that, that that's something that you can just buy off the shelf. You might say that's something that you can yeah, just yeah. It's not exactly yeah. Cheap. Okay. Okay. But you can buy it, but it's 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 basically just an, a plain normal fader mm -hmm. where you get a resistance and then you get the, the motor completely independent. Nice. nice and then you nice. need to create a software where you say, I want to move to a certain position. Then you need to apply a voltage to the motor and drive around and read out the position of the fader uh, using this potentiometer and decide whether you go faster or slower or stop or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and the most challenging part was getting the power, the power for the faders because uh, a fader can use up to eight hundred milliamps, and, and oh. you have in your whole system maybe just one and a half. So and it's just one fader. So we we uh, um, designed a system with super caps with these capacitors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, something in between batteries and, and normal, normal capacitors. So they. At the, when you start, when you turn on your rack, it it needs maybe half a minute, and then they they load up with enough power for making these operations, because the oh. fader is just working very shortly, of course. Yeah, but that that that's a great approach where you say, okay, well, we don't want to just draw eight hundred milliamps straight from the uh, uh, straight from the rack, because then you're just gonna have a, a, a big problem going further down the line if you've got let's say eight of these working at the same time you then you yeah. might need to have a <laughs> then you might need to add two dedicated <laughs> uh power supplies just to have your your motor faders but as you say if you then have uh something like a well i like to call those kind of capacitors capacitors on steroids where you can truly have well i just want to i compare that a bit to uh, how we used to have uh, photographic flashes in uh, in disposable cameras, yes, right? Yes, yes, it's a bit like that. Exactly. Yeah. Ha, very good. Where well, you say, okay, well, you yeah. just we we know that this is just going to be used very shortly. It's just going to be there, but we don't want to uh, power something with a uh, with with all of the, the the amps that you need at any given time because you know this is not. Well, there will probably be people that want to do very complex motions and dances with their motor faders, but those will probably be the exceptions. Uh, typically, the, the musicians will want yeah. to use them for what their intended purpose was. I mean, there, there's a certain limit, you know. Of course, if you want, if you make the faders go uh, back and forth all the time as, as fast as they can, yeah, the super caps will get empty soon. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. the limitation. But 
th there's no musical use in that anyway. It's, it's, no, indeed. Yeah. It's a kind of fun thing. You can do it once and then you say, okay, it's fun. And then, <laughs> then it's, it's yeah, enough. you do that. So, you do that so once no when people come to see your, uh, your, your new modules and you say, oh, watch what they can do. And you then press that button. But then yeah. that, that's, that, that's, that's one thing, of course. But then once you take your system out and you want to perform, then you are indeed, well, you're using that, that capability, the actual uh, motor faders just well uh, seconds at a time but not continuously yeah not so uh, awesome. basically it's a fraction of a second so they are so fast so although that's really really it works out really really well and and also the the, the current that one unit draws from the power supply it can be switched mm -hmm. so it's the minimum is 350 milliamps for the for one module for one block of of uh, four faders yeah and that's usually just used uh, in the first half minute yeah indeed and then of and course then if you need something more or less then you just it just takes a bit longer to, to charge them yeah and then you have with jumpers you can we can crank that up to a to, if you have a, a bigger power supply you mm -hmm. can use a jumper to make to allow for more power and then it powers up faster and can more can do more moves per second but but that's really no limitation there yeah the, the one thought around, I had uh, when I saw the, the, the video from Superbooth is, oh, I'm just so hoping no one breaks their fingers on them. But how powerful do they actually <laughs> no, no, feel? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are fast, but they are very light. So you, you cannot hurt yourself. It's really no problem. Well, I, I, I might be able to do that to myself because I, I, that, that's one of my gifts. It's one of my talents to hurt myself with these sorts of things. So uh, who yeah, knows? Okay. <laughs> I guess it's not possible because it's so weak. Yeah, uh, that's because true, they're course. really light. These things. So yeah, if if you run with full force, uh, no, no, I, I've tried it out. So it's, it doesn't even hurt. It's oh, that's problem. good to know. That's good to know because I saw these things uh, moving well, uh, lightning fast, and I'm like, okay, well, that sound. That, on the one hand, my first thought was, this is amazing. This is probably something that everyone within your Iraq will want to get into their racks the moment this becomes generally available and then i thought well that the speed and the uh the feedback you get is going to be phenomenal um but i i do need to be cognizant of the time here matthias and that is um yeah. i typically want to make sure that we also open this up for q a so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to ask you my my default two questions at the end and then i'm going to open it up for q a and we're going to have a look at the companion channel and see what the people in the audience have to say um so if, if you were to think back to that point in time when you had the uh, four month uh, synthesizer back when you were, uh, as you said, something like 14, 15. And if you were to give that young Matthias one piece of advice, what would that have been? Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't have to do with synthesizers or euro rack or anything or music even but if there is one point of advice that you would instill into them what would you then is there anything that comes to mind no i think it was completely okay that i just made this small experience with the synthesizer but continued to work on my my mm -hmm. career as a software developer which was quite successful and that gives me now the freedom to make what I want. Yeah. So and think... but you're still working as a software developer, right? Currently uh, during the day or have you stopped doing that and have you dedicated your complete time and energy to I basically work yeah. I, I would say I work uh, currently full time on the on the the man with the machine project. Mhm. Mm oh, awesome, yeah. So I I faded out a bit my my work in my software company. So that's so then, that's, that, that, that's good. Yeah. That's a, uh, then, then you've achieved what a lot of people uh, are, um, what, what their ambitions might be to be independent and truly follow their hearts, right? Yes, but but what uh, for me it's important uh, that the things I make do make sense mm -hmm. for someone. Not it's it's not a hobby, you know. They, I, I could have created the droid modules just that they fit my needs. For me, it's more fun if I make it in a general, generic way that it's I write a manual, uh, make mm -hmm. tutorials and everything so other other people can use them, have fun, give me feedback. Uh, we have a community, we have a, a project, we, we have so many 
yeah. devoted users. And that's really so much fun for me and so much motivation Yeah, uh, to see what they do with the droid. And, and they're so creative. That, that, that's, uh, that's important for me. And, and that, that's relevant. probably going to be extremely fulfilling as well to see the the impact or the empowerment that that you've given uh, that complete community surrounding uh, that ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very fulfilling. What I'm still working on is uh, to get more visibility, of course, because the droid is a very new concept. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. People are afraid that they have to program something, which is actually not really the case. You just configure it. Yeah, it's just a, just a config file, right? Yeah. yeah, there are some generic modules uh, that have Raspberry Pis and you program them in Python and stuff like that. So it's, it's, <laughs> Droid is something different, you know, it's, it's like patching. Uh, and so it's something new and people are afraid that it's too complicated for them. You need to invest some time and then you get great benefit from it. So it, it was the same with the Symphonion. The yeah. people thought, what, mm -hmm. I, I should like, buy a quantizer with 42 HP for 1,000 euros. Yeah. It's crazy, but in these days, uh, uh, many people use it. Colin Benders uses it, and, and Richard Devine has one, and, and, and so on. And mm -hmm. It took some time, you know, if you make something really new. If, if you create a new VCO, that's cool. Everyone will buy it immediately if, if there's a good video about it. Yeah, absolutely. But with the droid, it, it, uh, it takes some time for people to know what it's all about because if it's a module that can do everything uh, people believe it can do nothing <laughs> you know? no but that's absolutely <laughs> true and and uh, in my in my um so this is this for for me the whole modular clubhouse is a hobby and during the daytime i am a what we call a sales engineer so i work in in software pre-sales enterprise software pre-sales oh. and my job is um, primarily to make sure that people are immediately capable of understanding, hey, this is how this might fit the problems that I run into. So I totally understand immediately what you say. Well, it might be that people are intimidated by the notion of, oh, I need to do something in plain text. That's something I'm not comfortable with. But then again, it's all about awareness. It's all about, as, as you say, well, um, you, you want to show people the actual ease with which you can then configure things. And that is something that I think video is a great example. Video is, as you say, well, if you just have a VCO, you've got a good video, people immediately see how they do that. But in the case of these multifunctional um, modules, and uh, there are there are several, of, uh, and I think that what you've done with a droid is extremely exceptional to it, but it'll, it's going to need a bit of uh, education is maybe the wrong word, but awareness, but also um, a bit of a uh, forward thinking approach to how you then make sure, hey, this is how you can get started with very easy things within five minutes. And if you've got uh, 15 minutes, this is what you can already achieve. And this is how you can. And then, and then also it's all about sharing knowledge about that and making sure that people say, well, hey, but if um, I know that this artist that I like is using the droid in in, in this uh, in this approach. How did they then configure their droid, and is it easy for me to then understand how that configuration looks like? And from what I've seen up until now, the whole configuration is extremely straightforward because, as you said, it's just a plain text file where you just without without knowing to how to program, you can just configure it. And that is the, the whole thing that um, might be well, holding people back. But if they start looking a bit deeper, they'll they'll understand how it works, I, I'm assuming. Yeah, but my, I think my, my, but my mistake was when I made the videos, uh, I concentrated first on how you can do something and mm -hmm. then what you can do. So ah, I think yeah. I need to change this direction. I need to show more what you can do with the droid. Uh, it was like Colin Benders was, was at Superbook, you know, and yeah. uh, he immediately understood what we can do with that. And mm -hmm. then late, much later, he thinks about, mm, okay, now let's talk about how this is configured. Yeah. And, and we, then we well, can well, show how yeah. easy it is or whatever. And that, that's a, the right direction. So the, the right order to do things. First, I need to show people what you can do with yeah. that and to show that it's fun and you can be very creative with that. And 
That's mm -hmm. that's something I plan for a new series of videos to, oh, awesome. to concentrate more on applications. Awesome, and and then um, again, this is this is the, uh, this is a um, this is a topic that's very dear to my heart. And and then as you say, well, if it's all about uh, tell demo tell, so first tell, hey, this is the uh, this is the piece of value I want to show you that you can achieve with the droid in 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 this use case then show how you do it and then again go back you just saw how easy it is and we were indeed able to achieve the the actual thing that you wanted to achieve like like you like you just mentioned and that is and and i come from a before i went into pre-sales i i was a developer as well and i totally understand yeah. that you first want to show how it's done and then talk about how why that is important because that's what we as developers do yeah and yes, so it, you had to you. you had to rethink that of course so no worries there whatsoever so i'm looking forward to that uh, <laughs> and then of course for my last question um this is something because i've already had the the honor and the privilege to pick your brain for an hour uh, but i do want to return the favor and that is if you have any question for me as well and then we're going to open it up for the q a for the for the audience <laughs> Oh, so your second question is if I have a question. <laughs> if you have a question for me, no. because yeah, it might be that following all the things that we talked about, you say, well, I do want to quickly go back to that point and maybe, yeah, who knows? What kind of, I've, I've had yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> or really I'm interesting questions kind of up until now. You do. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious about your music, what music you do. And I've, I've, I must be honest, I've not, not looked at the internet yet. Mm -hmm. but do you have some link or something? Yeah, so I've got on get... my uh, on my YouTube channel, I have the, the typically the videos. But what I do from a music perspective, that's typically found on the uh, on my uh, Instagram. And the reason for that is, is I have always been involved with music, but I've never been trained musically. So Eurorack and um, my whole journey that I've been on for the last, well, more than a year, I can now say, is truly finally empowering me to do creative things with music. And what I first initially tried to do was a bit more into the electro punk approach where you might say, well, I want to find the boundaries of what you can do from a DIY music approach. Uh, so not necessarily immediately going into a very genre specific approach but more trying to figure out where the boundaries lie and at the same time i'm of course have a, I'm, I'm documenting this whole journey that i've done with uh, like well like we do today the actual interviews getting to know the stories behind uh behind the the eurorack makers eurorack musicians people within the eurorack sphere and, and and modular more in general and then also making sure that i try to capture um, my understanding of musical uh, production but also how i learn modules so every time i have a module i'll make a video on every single module that i do and i try to do that very low level trying to like okay well this is what the module looks like and this is what you can achieve with this and this has been my journey trying to understand it and that is something where I, on the one hand, want to give back to the community as well. And that's what I recognize with the story you just said on how you are just so um, well pleased with all the feedback and you see all the beautiful things that people do. And I, my giving back to the community is I want to create a lot of content out there. So if anyone has any sort of question about a module, about a a specific Eurorack maker or a Eurorack um, uh, personality or uh, an artist that they are able to find that within the smaller ecosystem that I want to create. Sounds good. I Sounds try good. to be, and I, <laughs> the only thing I can do is my best, right? Um, yeah, of course. So then, uh, but great question, I love that. And I'm gonna share the, uh, the link to my uh, Instagram uh, in the channel as well. Uh, but with that, uh, this is always a, a beautiful uh, part in these uh, interviews, is we'd like to open it up for Q&A. So if anyone who has joined live has a question and is willing and comfortable 
uh, to join us on stage, please uh, use the button that says raise your hand or a request to, uh, to speak up. And in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna quickly read through what we already have on the companion channel. Um, so the, uh, the first question, let's see, was there, yeah, spring, cold and wet from sound unit, absolutely, yes, plus al allergies, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, another piece of feedback is that's why you need multiple systems once one for performance and one for experimentation um, is that also yeah, true for sense. you or? yeah I have my side racks where I can try out new things because uh, trying out new ideas in the live system is much too uh, is, is too too much work you know and it's All risky these... I'm assuming as well and then it, it doesn't work out and you want to, to make it back I mean the live system every single HP is, is used so if i want to add a new module i need to remove other ones and and that mm -hmm. that needs to be worth it absolutely no that makes sense that so makes i think sense. that's it that makes sense and then we have a question from 10 may uh who's who's asking who is this handsome man following the picture <laughs> so i think that the answer is uh, quite self-evident uh then we've got uh, thomas and i think that thomas uh, uh said this when we were talking about the um, uh, the multi chord progression approaches that you were looking for and Thomas and uh, Thomas is of course from uh, Xor Electronics uh, maker ah, okay. yeah <laughs> so he immediately says I know of, of, of a sequencer that can do that yeah <laughs> that's a good point yeah I think I think many sequencers can do chord progressions but but mm -hmm. if you want you have a sequencer and then you have a quantizer and and you want both of them have the same chord progression then it gets complicated aha uh -huh. that is that is interesting i didn't say it's not possible i, I just said <laughs> <laughs> that for me it was it was not so hands-on well perfect perfect for so for those for those of you who don't know xor electronics xor electronics and thomas is of course the uh the, the brand and the person behind the nerdsec sequencer let me just um ah the nerdsec okay of course I, I yeah know, yeah sure. <laughs> so i'm just gonna link to uh to to, to, to yeah it's quite popular well. and it's a cool project absolutely it's, it's, absolutely it's very... and i'm still i'm still <laughs> and this is something i have to tell thomas i'm still working to get my hands around across to it because as i said I'm, I'm always trying to make videos on all these modules and the the nerd sec is still quite a <laughs> it's still quite an enigmatic uh uh sequencer for me and I'm, I'm 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 i've actually have it here right next to me because one of the things i was planning to do later tonight is to well dive in and do some i was i was i was about to start to design some some actually it's just some punk rock uh, sequences into it and see if that would be the the one thing that makes it click for me so that's always a, a great approach um but i again i go off on a tangent here um then we've got fx music um who states i'm nearly there to make all my music with eurorack via droids so that's again that's one of the positive feedbacks that you immediately get and i've read so many things about other people that do the exact same thing that it says well the the droid has every has has truly become the, the brains within my approach then the question from z4 is are we talking about haptic sliders uh, yeah that's that's indeed the <laughs> the approach yeah it's it's <laughs> i mean it depends on the on the on the on the function that you map on the sliders you know if you just have use it for controlling a cv you you don't have haptic feedback but Mm -hmm. If you set it up to make stepped uh, values, then you get these notches, or yeah. you can create yeah. a kind of pitch bend wheel where it, uh, it's like a spring that all that Ooh, always yeah. pulls it into the middle, um, stuff like that. And it can Ooh, change it the way it behaves depending on, on your buttons and, and, and the current function. I love that. And then uh, another comment is, uh, it can't do the wave like you say well you can you can actually have a wave w working through your sliders well you could probably do that probably but then that, do, then only for a few, few seconds yeah <laughs> um let's see the the, 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 uh, the question i always have with motors in eurorack and this is a question again from z4 is can these pull out or damage cables i think that we yeah we touched upon how powerful these are 
would I be right in then assuming that these will not have to be powerful enough to actually impact cables or is that a bit of a, a coin I mean, toss I, there? I cannot imagine any of this because because these the parts that actually move are very lightweight, you know. Yeah. It's it's nothing heavy that's moving around. So the 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 sh the shock or something is is so tiny. I cannot imagine. Yeah, you know? the actual impulse that it that it packs is not it's yeah, not it's, enough I mean, to. If you move uh, the yeah. with your finger, you get uh, you get maybe a, a similar impulse. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Yeah. So it makes sense. Um, then we've got um, from FX Music. For me, the interview with Red means recording. So Jeremy, uh, get me to want the droids and. Um, the additional feedback is actually this, this whole patching with an any file is great fun for me because uh, he also says or oh, they all also say uh, that they love the droid community on discord and I think that that's also tying back into the the, um, the, the story you were just uh, sharing is that the whole community is of course sharing a lot of this lessons learned and also the uh, the approaches that they they've chosen as well yeah, there, there's many super nice guys. FX Music is one of the uh, the, the most active and nicest guys on, on our community. Very helpful, and then there are lots of others. And I like how they they help themselves, uh, and and it's a very, very positive community. No oh. hate speech. Everyone everyone is helping. Yeah, no absolutely. one is, is arrogant or something. If he knows more than the others, it's really <laughs> yeah. And I've been really I've fun. been I've been I've been lurking into the. Uh into your discord uh, server as well and, and i can only attest to that fact that it's a very welcoming and very uh well uh, great community on that uh let's see then we've got uh thomas saying well yeah music is work too yeah absolutely i think we can all agree with that um some feedback from from z4 uh, very interesting good to hear um fx uh, says thanks for the nice things you just mentioned <laughs> you just uh talked about him um and then a question from Xizora: how much stock of those very large capacitors do you have because i think that m4 will be rather popular i have a, I have, a I have a box full I've, okay, of course i've i've bought many parts i'm for a half more than half a year i'm i'm busy in in purchasing parts for modules which is in these mm -hmm. days quite difficult sometimes yeah also imagine. the motor faders uh, i have uh, a great stock in my in my in my labs from i think i i bought all that was available on the market for half a year <laughs> <laughs> perfect i love that i love that that's great yeah i mean these, these parts are not so so easy they're very special parts and i didn't manage to get in direct contact with the, with the, with alps with the manufacturer mm-hmm so I bought a couple of hundred in Germany and a couple of hundred in uh, in USA, and then it was sold out everywhere. So, <laughs> so that's uh, Alps uh, the, uh, Alpine, uh, the electronics yeah, yeah, company. Yeah, they, oh, they are just wow. two. I just found two different vendors of the motor faders. One is Beringer, which which is ruled out, uh, of mm -hmm, course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't sound very steady. Also, I need the sixty millimeter faders because. These are the only ones to fit into your rack. Oh. You know, we have, we have, we have this uh, 128 millimeter module size and yeah. that's a limitation. So the 100 millimeter faders don't fit into the modules. Okay. So, and so then I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just looking into out. that. So yeah. if we then look at the RSN1, what's it again? The RSN1, I'm assuming then. But those are, oh nice the motor and fader and the, the 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 reason i'm looking into this is i i want to understand the uh the inner workings as well but that, that, that's something i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not yeah. gonna bother anyone with but that's something i'm gonna be looking into later on oh but that's great and again uh a piece of feedback from fx music there are many great people in the droid community and i think that's uh that is absolutely 100 percent true um yeah that's really true absolutely they're uh, also helpful yeah. uh, at least two guys helped me uh, they worked through the whole manual of the droid which is very large these days yeah and 
and sent me lots of pages of, of typos and improvements for the for the user manual and and others work on the one guy works on the system on the syntax support for for text editors for the droid syntax and stuff like that so awesome yeah. people had together and that's that's really nice and and as you say that that's of course the main thing right where the whole community just steps in and and supports uh, the Eurorack makers and I think that that is one of the the beautiful things um, that during the last well probably 14 months in my case that I've seen within uh, within the Eurorack sphere that that is almost a uh, yeah it's it's almost just a um, an expectation nowadays that you can truly expect to see all of these communities surrounding all of these beautiful creative uh, initiatives that are going on and I uh, I can only applaud anyone for uh, investing their time, energy, love, and creativity into supporting uh, uh, people like you and the rest of the Eurorack Maker Sphere in, in that approach as well. Because I think that, that that's the way that we can all well benefit and grow as a community, I would say. Yeah, I really love this Eurorack community. It's, it's really, it's like like open source community. It's yeah Low, that, that's a, a lot that's of a great analogy yeah persons and it's very open people are nice to each other there's no no hate speech and and yeah it's really always in it doesn't depend on which in which forum or discord you go always you have you have nice people there absolutely absolutely and and sometimes yeah you you find these these great gems and i, I like the um the analogy that you mentioned with the open source community from a software perspective of course um the whole os community is is, is similar into that that approach too no absolutely perfect um we don't we didn't get anyone to raise their hand so apparently we are quite intimidating to talk to live but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we got some great feedback from the uh, from the audience uh, so I'm just going to say, well, if there are any last questions, oh, we got one question in um, uh, from TMP. Are there plans to make the droid code open source? Fair question. Um, yeah, currently, currently not. It's it's not so. Anyway, you know, I mm -hmm. my other co software company that I have that has open source software, and from that yeah. I know all that. Simply making a code open source doesn't work out. You need support. You need it documented. You need the build chain. Uh, lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's really lots of work <clears throat> to actually support an open source project from from yeah. A it, it, it does introduce a lot of overhead. <laughs> absolutely, that's that's one thing I uh, I can attest to as well. Sometimes sometimes people people are missing features, and I really try hard to implement them as soon as possible, in order to. Yeah, so that they needn't program themselves, but it's it's not so easy to program in that droid. You know, the it's it's mm -hmm. tricky. It's tricky. You need to sometimes I need I need a week for finding a bug. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you know, you are very limited in in, uh, in the RAM usage and the CPU usage and the space of the code. <clears throat> Everything must be compatible, so it's uh, it's it's not so easy. Absolutely. So I rather invest my time in improving everything and listening what the what the mm -hmm. community wants and needs. They have many great ideas, and if, if it's possible, I always tend to implement it. Anyway, absolutely so great. Sometimes, but... of course, people are impatient. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand, <laughs> but I do my uh, best to make absolutely. it work, and then I, I will support it. Once a feature is in, I will support it and make it work uh, also in the future. It's absolutely, also, uh, absolutely. And I think that that's something that uh, Affix is again is is attesting to that fact as well. So I think that uh, no, that's that's something that we are truly uh, very understanding of. Um, that being said, well, we're already at uh, we're already twenty minutes over the time that we had. So I do have to apologize oh. for you, <laughs> Matthias, for taking uh, a bit longer of your time. But I again, I want to thank you so much, uh, not just for taking your time for this interview today. Uh, but also for everything that you've done from a, uh, a creative asp uh, aspect, uh, being a mu musician and inspiring a lot of uh, people for getting into Eurorack, getting into uh, synthesizers and getting into 
the whole well the whole community you might even say but also with all of the innovation that you've brought to this uh, community uh, both through uh, the the collaborations you've done with ACL and of course now uh, specifically with the droid ecosystem and I think that we are all uh, anxiously waiting for the motor phases everyone was so impressed yeah. with everyone that I talked to uh, has has been has been waiting for that ever since they saw the videos from uh, Superboot last year um, that being said thanks yeah. again um, any 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 closing thoughts any uh, last pieces of wisdom you want to instill the audience the, yeah, the live yeah, audience or the people Jasper, that run? Of course, yeah. my best pleasure and honor. Thank for your all your work and for your podcasts and uh, and for your for your talks and for giving me uh, the opportunity to talk a bit about about my modules and my music. It was really fun and yeah, thanks for being for helping uh, making all this community better and nicer and, and more fun. It's 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 an honor and a pleasure, absolutely. Don't you worry. And uh, this is not the last time the two of us uh, will will do one one of these things. We'll be in touch. Uh, that being said, so. yeah, oh no, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, but that being said, I do want to thank everyone for joining live for any questions uh, that have been asked to the companion channel. If you are listening to this recording later on uh, and you do have a question for me or, f or, or for Matthias, uh, please don't hesitate to drop them either in the comments down below or reach out uh, to us directly. Uh, that being said, um, I do want to take this opportunity, if you are in any way, shape or form uh, uh, capable of helping out anyone who is now currently being impacted with all the violence happening in uh, the eastern parts of Europe, um, please do so. If there's anything that we can help, if you are indeed impacted by that, feel free to reach out as well. Um, for, for now, I would just want to make absolutely certain, please everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. And I hope to see you or hear you for my next um, for my next show. For now, take care. Cheers. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Have a nice time. Thanks, Matthias. Cheers. Bye bye. <laughs>